Uh, before starting the new lecture, uh, please uh, pay attention that uh, next week we will have quiz quiz of uh, chapter seven. Okay. Uh, next next week on uh, Tuesday. And uh, two weeks after that, we will have a question on a quiz of chapter eight. No, the chapter is finished. Okay, and as I said before, two weeks after finishing. Uh, each chapter, we will have a quiz from that chapter. Uh, last week, we have a quiz from chapter 4. Next week, we will have a quiz from chapter And two weeks after that, two weeks after that, we will have quiz of chapter 8. I want to take these exams. Why? Because I don't want to put uh, all of them together for the final exam. I want to divide, to scatter, to scatter uh, the marks between uh, different dates between different weeks in the term. You have a midterm on 12-12. Uh, okay, let me... I should check it. Uh, in oh, let me check it. Let me. Today is uh, December fourth, and you have an exam on this. December 12th, okay? Is it true, Hana? Hana cousin? Is it true? You have an exam on December 12th. Uh, okay, we can have, uh, instead of Tuesday, we can have an exam on uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, so uh, the quiz of next chapter, chapter 7, is planned on uh, December 16. Is it good? Thursday. Tuesday, instead of Tuesday, next exam is uh, prepared on uh, prepared for uh, Wednesday, Thursday, for Thursday. Uh, from now you can you have enough time, and uh, the quiz of chapter eight will be held on. Uh, December 13th. Okay? Two weeks after that. So next next exam, the next quiz is uh, December is in uh, December 16 and after that on uh, next quiz quiz on uh, December 13. Yes. December 16.
on uh, next week Sunday you have you you are telling that in next Sunday you have an exam okay next Sunday okay because of that exam the quiz of chapter seven would uh, will be will be on uh, uh, Thursday next Thursday December sixteen. Okay. This experience is useful for you because you have two weeks time to read the course and prepare for the exam and uh, uh, take the exam and then forget that chapter. Just you need to think about the project and the assignment of that chapter and after that uh, we will do this for chapter eight so uh, you have to read a small portion of uh, course for the final exam because uh, no Zara, no instead of taking one midterm mid -term exam I am taking multiple exams, chapter to chapter. Okay. Instead of having one exam, I have we have multiple exams, chapter by chapter, and you can pass. If you pass each chapter, you can then uh, forget it and focus on a new chapter. Okay. Homework two. Uh, I will upload it today. I will upload homework uh, number two today, and also project number two. You have enough time. Okay? okay. I will give you enough time to do those projects and homeworks. Please pay attention. Uh, some of your classmates uh, told uh, told me that uh, they have some problems with the LMS and uh, with the quiz. So they lost the quiz, they lost the marks of quizzes. Okay, I know there are several pro problems. So please put your effort, do your best in the, in the homeworks and projects in the homeworks and projects if you lost some marks in the quizzes i can cover some of those marks because i know there are several problems uh, with the internet with the lms So, the quizzes are important for me, but I will recover some marks of the quizzes for you. It depends on your homeworks and your projects. Please don't copy your projects or your homeworks. Never copy. Don't do them yourself and upload them in the LMS for me, uh, then I will help you uh, in your marks at the end of term. Okay? Is it clear? On average, Zara said that how much did you use in each project? Pay attention. Each chapter, each chapter has 
on average, on average, each chapter has four marks. The to your total mark is 20 or maybe 21, okay? And each chapter has four marks. We have four marks in chapter one, four marks for chapter four, four marks in chapter seven, four marks in chapter eight. And after that, we have some uh, special topics from chap uh, in, for example, chapter five or some somewhere else. Uh, they have four uh, marks too. Okay, uh, during the last lecture, we talked about cryptography and uh, we showed that uh, if we decide to uh, encrypt the messages between two different entities, we can use uh, cryptography algorithms and we said that we can use uh, cryptographic with symmetry keys uh, algorithms or we can use uh, asymmetric uh, keys algorithms with asymmetric keys and we said that uh, if we uh, use our uh, encryption methods with symmetry keys those methods are faster or uh, they uh, need uh, lower power um, with respect to the asymmetric keys or um, but in symmetry in the algorithm with symmetry keys we have a big problem how we, we can share the key safely okay but in uh, in the second group the encryption algorithms with asymmetric keys Uh, we use two different keys, one public key and, and uh, another one is a private key. I can, uh, I can publish my public key and if someone else try to send me, tries to send me something, uh, he or she can encrypt the message by, by, uh, by uh, uh, my public key. And after that, the message would be decrypted only by my private key. My private key is in my pocket. So the asymmetric key algorithms are more powerful, but they are using, as we uh, see, as we say, uh, as we saw. Uh, in RSA. They are using more powers, uh, they have more consult uh, more uh, calculations. Uh, so we need uh, something new. And uh, finally, we say that, okay, uh, we can start with an uh, asymmetric key algorithm, and then uh, over that algorithm, we can share the Public uh, shared uh, shared key of a uh, symmetric key algorithm, and after that uh, we can work with the uh, symmetric key algorithm. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, today, we want to continue our uh, talks, or talk, and uh, we want to talk about authentication. Uh, let me back to the example, to our example, uh, Alice and Bob. Two lovers, okay? Uh, Alice tried to send a message to Bob. But firstly, Alice should introduce herself. Oh, Bob, I am Alice. One main question. How Bob? Can identify that this is real Alice? We are working, we are uh, uh, talking about a virtual uh, world. We're talking about internet. Someone uh, send a message to me, okay, I'm Alice. Really, are you Alice? How can I, how should, uh, can I? that you are Alice. Let me know. How can I prove you are Alice? I need an authentication mechanism. Maybe someone else, maybe Trudy, sent that message to me. Oh, I am Alice. Hey, I don't know needs to send that message. So I need a protocol, I need a mechanism to prove that the real Alice sends a mes the message to me. Okay? So, when we talk about authentication, we are looking for a proving mechanism to prove the identity of the other side. In the simplest form, just I need to, I'm asking, who are you? And the other side will ask, answer, uh, I am Alice. This is the simplest form. Okay, he's Alice. I ask her, and he said that I am Alice. So, he's authenticated. From my uh, point of view, this is Alice. Because it, she told me I am Alice. Okay? But this scenario is not enough. And maybe through this send, send me that message. Look at this one. Here, the two is send this message. Okay, I am Alice. Uh, there's a cartoon here in the right corner of this uh, slide. Instead of uh, Alice, a dog, a dog, for example, send me this message. I am Alice.
a packet is uh, spoofing attack. The two D sniff. All these packets. All these packets. Okay. And then after that, the two resend those messages or or uh, the two D creates similar messages with similar identities. And uh, then he or she send those messages to Bob. I am Alice, and this is my IP address. So again, this time you can be failed. Let me try another strategy. I am Alice, and this is my IP address, and this is my password. Alice has has its own password. To prove that he, she is Alice, he sends her IP address, her message, and her password to Bob. And Bob says, okay, I know that you are Alice. Because, for example, because of that IP address, I don't know, something like that. Again, this strategy is not enough because if the truth is if that packet, the truth can resend or replay or play back that message to Bob. Oh, I am Alice. This is my secret key, my password, and this is my IP address. And Bob. Will be satisfied. Why? Because he received his message uh, with Alice's password, with Alice's IP address. Okay. So, uh, two can use playback attacks. To break. This communication to hijack this communication. It's very simple. Okay, uh, maybe someone sees that. Okay, Alice can encrypt her, her password. Here, Alice sends her password in plain text format without encryption. So. Maybe someone says that okay, you can the Alice can encrypt her message, her uh, password, her secret key, and then she can send uh, those messages to Bob, and Bob answer to Alice, would answer to Alice. Okay, but it's not important. Even if you encrypt your password. Nothing will be changed. Why? Because the truly same truly can play back, can use playback attacks. The truly can sniff packets and then reset or replay or play back those messages uh, to Bob. Some uh, sometime else after that. So that encryption cannot solve my problem. The other strategy is this. Alice would say, I am Alice. Bob would say, Oh, really? You are Alice. You are Alice. Okay. You have my own shade key. We have a shared key. I have a shared key with Alice. Alice has a copy of that key, and I have a copy too. So, Bob would say that, okay, if you are Alice, please include this message for me. Bob, we send a message to Alice. Okay, if you are Alice, Encrypt this message to me. 
because you have my uh, you have a copy of all shaved key so if Alice is the real Alice she can encrypt message receive message from our bot but can change this message sometime else okay and Alice only Alice can know what's that shape key and then she can encrypt the message the receive message from Bob with that shape key and uh, she will send it uh, to Bob and Bob uh, can decrypt the message and check the received message uh, with uh, Well, the decrypt this received message is encrypted message and the result, and then it can check the result with his sent message. Okay, here we know that we have a shaking between Alice and Bob, each of them has its his uh, or her own copy of the uh, key and using this simple strategy they can authenticate the other side but this strategy has a simple drawbacks Uh, yes, I will answer your question. This is simple strategy. And I and Bob, both of them, has a shape key. But at the end of this, at the bottom of this slide, you can see failures and drawbacks words. Why? The answer is simple. As we talked in the encryption in the uh, last lecture, when we are using a shared key encryption uh, strategy, the problem is how we can share that key safely, securely? Because the key is unique. If someone hears that key or receives that key, he or she can encrypt or decrypt the stages. So this is a real problem. How we can how I can share that key, that keys. So, we can say, okay, if you, uh, if you are worried about the, sh the shared key, okay, use an asynchronous cryptography or use public and private key encryption strategies. Okay. Let me check this new one strategy. I am Alice. Bob would send Message R for Alice. Put the message by her private key. Pay attention. This encrypted message 
is you uh, prepared using the private key of bodies of bodies look at this minus sign it means that this key is the private key of alice uh, the alice private key okay so simply bar can ask uh, the alice okay send me your public key Alice can send her public key. We talked about about it uh, in the last session. Always we publish the public key over the internet. Uh, there is something wrong here. Uh, we should omit this part here. Um, here. This part here. Omit this part here. Look at this one. Dalis receives it this message. Mr. Message R. Then she send a for with her private key okay this one here this minus signs minus sign this means that this key is a private key and after that the bar would ask for her public key. This public key is published over the internet. Dallas would send it. Why? Why Bob is looking for looks for uh, this public key? Look at this here. In asymmetric cryptographic algorithms, always if I encrypt a message with one of those key, one of those uh, keys, only I can decrypt the result with the other key and with the other key. Here, firstly, the message is encrypted with the private key, so to decrypt it, only we need it. Only we can use the public here. So, when Bob looks for this public key, he tries to decrypt the message here. He tries to decrypt this message. The encrypted message by by Alice. Okay. Using this strategy, we can remove the risk of uh, publishing a shape key or sending a shape key over internet. Over and unsafe uh, platform okay in this slide we have a specific phrase nonce but what is nonce We should talk about it. We should talk about knots. Okay. Is the 
this strategy say is safe here? Is it enough? Is it complete? Yes or no? It's a good question. Let me show a man, a man in the middle attack or a woman in the middle attack. What is this attack? In man in the middle or woman in the middle attack, a man or woman sits in the passes in the route between Anis and Bob. Between Anis and Bob. Get this one? This is Anis. This is Bob from the right side. And Trudy sits here. Between Anis and Bob. We called it man in the middle attack. So what's the problem? The problem is this. When all these sins, when all these sins, her message, go on all this. This message is sent to Trudy, not to Bob. Man in the middle. This is my message. Encrypt it. That is really encrypted by. I can understand that the other side is Trudy. But at the same time, at the same time, when Alice sits, send me a message, okay, I am Alice, the Trudy will send a similar message to Bob, I am Alice. And Bob said, okay, let me decrypt this message, encrypt this message. The Trudy would encrypt it, but with her or his key. Here, key of T, key of uh, the Trudy. Here this one here. This. Here this one here, here. This is straightforward. This is simple. The Trudy is sits between Alice and Bob, and he or she, the Trudy, will answer to the other side. She create a communication with Alice and creates another communication with Bob. After this authentication mechanism, Alice thinks that there is Bob in the other side and Bob thinks that, okay, this is Alice in my uh, Communication. But we know that is not true. Okay? So we should be clear about this. Okay. Uh, please wait a minute. I will be back soon. Please wait.
No, yeah. No, 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 no. R is not chief. R is a message. R is a message. Okay? K is the chief. K is the key. If you, you can see here, if you put a minus sign, a minus sign, over K, something like this here, a K with minus sign, it means that this is a private key. And if I put a plus sign, plus sign over a K, over the K, it means that this is the public key. This is the public key. So K with a minus sign is a private key. K with a plus sign is a public key. K. Here, K of A. K of A means that this is the Q of, this is the Alice key. And K of T here means that this is through this key. This is through this key. T means through the. A means Alice. B means Bob. Okay, A is Alice, this key is Alice key, a private, uh, uh, Alice is private key, Alice is public key, through this uh, private key, through this pocket, uh, public key. So, minus means private, Plus means public, and A, T, and other uh, signs means name of the owner of that key. K of A means Alice is owner of that key. K of T means uh, K with substitution, substitute of K, T means that uh, true D is the owner of that key. Okay? Here, you get this one here. I'm looking about this, this one here. Or here. This is minus or plus. If you write K with a minus sign, I mean a public key. If I write a K with plus sign, I mean a public key. Is it okay? A here, A it means others, T means owner is true to you. Okay. Uh, let me talk about this one here. I said that Alice, the Bob, will send a message to Alice. And Alice should answer, must, Alice must answer, or must re, uh, must return the message, the but in an encrypted form. Here, Dallas will send an encrypted form of message R. But, only question. Okay. If I know uh, the Bob's message, So if I sniff the Bob's message and uh, the encrypted um, and encrypted form sent by 
Aris and even the public tree of Aris. Can I break this mechanism? Maybe yes. Why? How can I encrypt this message? If Adi, if Bob use a similar message here, and a static message R, always, I always use a static message R to send to, to Aris. So, Trudy can sniff the messages and resend or re uh, play or play back those messages. So, Trudy can break this mechanism easily. What does it mean? It means that Bob has to change this message over the time. Bob must use a mechanism to change the message R along the time. Bob cannot send, or Bob cannot reuse and resend the past message to Alice. Because whenever, pay attention, whenever you resend a packet, a, a repeated packet over the internet, over the network, the attacker can break your security mechanism. This is the key principle to break a, a security mechanism. We never must, we must never send a message twice. We, we should, we mustn't repeat the messages. If we, if we repeat something, then the attacker can break the security mechanism. So Bob cannot, must not send a similar message as an static message, an static message to Alice. Bob must change that message over the time. But how? The answer is simple. Using a nonce. But what is nonce? It's simple. It's a time tag. It's a time stamp. Okay? If you look on the date and time of your computer, you can see, for example, okay, today is uh, December 4, 2020, and time now is uh, 4.56 Tehran time. Or for uh, 26 bar time, okay. And even I can talk about even seconds. For example, 4:56, uh, 30 seconds. And now, if, if I repeat it, this is December 4, 2021, uh, 4:57. And one second. If I repeat it, this is December 4, 2000, uh, first, uh, 4.57 uh, with, for example, 10 seconds. Okay? Along the time, I can see that my time is increased. My time is changed. I'm looking for something like this. Like this. So, when we talk about nonce, it means that I'm looking for something related, not, not a number, um, it's a string, it's a big string, consists of different parts. It's not a single number, it's an... Uh, Yes, Hannah, yes. You can find nouns in blockchain, yes. Because of this. 
We are using nouns to change this thing over the time. And that nouns wouldn't repeat again because the clock is going forward always. We cannot go back uh, in dates. Okay? We cannot go back in dates, in time. We always go forward. So, simply we can prove that a noun would never repeat in the history. So, when Bob sends the message R to Alice, he is using a noun in his message. Then, if the truth is sits in the past, the past uh, in the past between Alice and Bob, and a sneaky packet, and then after, for example, after one uh, one hour, for example, if you do re replay or play back. The last message is to Bob. Okay? Judy sniffs those packets. And then the Judy tries, the Judy tries to uh, resend those packets to Bob. Here. When, Alice when Bob received this uh, public key, and he, in the past, he receives the Message included with the private key of Alice. Simply, he try to extract to to decrypt the message and retrieve the R. And then Bob would check the nouns. Now, if the nouns is old, simply Bob will drop it. Okay, all this. Your message is old. It's dead. Your message is dead. It's time is the time of this message is finished. It's over. You know, using the nouns. Each noun must reply in a short time. After that, for example, I think that my message should return. Uh, should be returned in, uh, for example, three seconds, five seconds, not more. So if the truth replied my message, for example, uh, ten minutes later, so the, its time is over. Okay, the time is announced is over. The time is passed. So at this, so Bob. Simply would drop the uh, message. And if the real artist sends this packet, because we never accept that message. The real artist must resend or redo this uh, um, uh, these steps again. Again, she uh, have to send his private message, I am Alice, and Bob would send another message to Alice, and then uh, Alice should uh, redo all of these steps. Uh, maximum five seconds is a, is a sample. I don't know. It depends on your uh, case. Maybe a system accepts a wider range of time, a bigger interval, this may be no. It depends. For example, if, if uh, my system is placed uh, in my network, the sender and receiver are in similar network, so we can decrease this time. For example, we can decrease it uh, to one or two seconds. 
and if we uh, are uh, working over the internet we can increase this time uh, this ninth strategy uh, is very helpful is an is an uh, is a helpful strategy uh, for example uh, when you are um, installing security uh, tools uh, in your car or in your uh, um, home using remote to to open the car the car's door your uh, the doors of your car or uh, the door of uh, your home okay in that remote we are using a nonce strategy if you don't use that nonce strategy someone else can sniff my uh, when I'm, uh, for example when i'm pushing uh, the open door key okay there's a key on my remote to open the door okay when i push that key the doors of my car uh, would be open okay if so if a trudy is near to my car and he or she sniff sniffs uh, my messages my remote messages then simply the druid can sniff it and play back it to my car the result is interesting the doors of my car will be open i'm not all uh, in my car around my car at that time but the truth simply can open my car on the doors of my car just using an, a simple a sniffer so in anti-theft systems security systems uh, in my car in the cars or in homes we have to use nouns strategy Otherwise, someone else can come, a Trudy can come and uh, steal, steal my, steal my uh, car or my home. Okay? Uh, let me talk about uh, something interesting digital signature. Uh, in today's internet, Mostly we are looking for a strategy to check the identity of the other side. For example, there is a, uh, there is a remote web server over the internet and I should uh, and I receive a message from that remote server. How can I prove that this is the real uh, server? I need a mechanism to verify. Okay, this is Alice or this is Bob. And that Alice and Bob never can never uh, forgivable, forgivable, uh, forgivable uh, her or his identity. So how how can I? Prove this. For example, I receive a letter. Okay. For example, this letter comes uh, to me, uh, the Dr. Rahman, for example, send a message to me. Okay. How can I prove that uh, Dr. Rahman is sending this message to me? Or, for example, the dean of the university, send a message to me, send a letter to me. How can I prove that this is uh, Dr. Uh, Hamidi's message to me, dean of the university? How can I prove it? I'm looking for a signature of Dr. Hamid, Dr. Hamid's signature. Oh, okay, I'm looking for a signature, or I'm looking for a signature of for the Dr. Rahmani's signature. Okay, Dr. Rahmani signs this letter. Can we have a similar strategy in digital world? Can we have something uh, similar 
in all digital world, especially uh, when I'm uh, when I try to um, send a request, for example, to buy something. Yes, I'm looking for a proof, uh, proof system, proving the identity of the other side. The identity uh, should be verifiable and non for you. No one can say, okay, it's, uh, it's not me. If I have a letter, I can show shows the sign. Show the sign. Okay? Is this, this is, uh, is it your sign? Your signature? Yes or no? You send me this letter. And this is your sign, your signature, here, at the bottom of this letter. This is your signature. So you send me this message. And he, the man or the woman on the other side, he or she cannot say, oh no, this is not my letter. Yes, this is his letter or her letter. Why? Because of that signature at the bottom of the letter. That signature verifies his or her identity. I'm looking for something like that in digital world. So we call it digital signature. I'm looking for a digital signature. It means that I'm looking for a strategy that when Bob's send a message to Odyssey, for example, Oh, dear audience, oh, how I have uh, missed you, I think, you are all the, the time, and something like that. And Bob signs this message. But how? How can prove that this is it from Bob's side? With the strategies that we uh, learn until now, I can say that, okay, if you are looking to prove that this is a sign signed by Bob, it's simple. How? Okay, Bob, if you are the real Bob, encrypt your message with your private key. The Bob should encrypt his message with his private key. And then, look at this one, here. And then, send the message, the Bob should send his message, say M, to Alice, plus message plus the encrypted message, encrypted with his private key encrypted text with his private key and here look at this one here this is the main text of the message and finally that encrypted text we are using that encrypted text as a signature. We are putting it on the bottom of this letter. And this message is sent to Alice. But why? Why this, uh, why this one works? It's simple. Again, it's simple. Why? Why it's simple? How can I prove that this message comes from uh, our site. Very easy. It's very easy. How? Huh? I know that the public the box public key is published over the internet. Always. Always the public keys are published over the internet. And now I'm asking the Bob to sign this message 
with his private key. So Onis simply Onis can receive the public of the Bob's public key from the internet. And now Onis receives an encrypted message from Bob's site. Encrypted with private with the private key. So simply we talked in the last lecture. If you encrypt a message with one of those keys, only you can decrypt that message, that encrypted message, with the other key. So if the real Bob, if the real Bob signs this message, encrypt this message with his private key. Simply I can extract, I can decrypt that message with the public, with the Bob's public key. This key is all internet. So I can download it and decrypt the message. If I after decryption, if I receive a similar text with this one here, I said that I should send the plain text plus the encrypted text. So here I have an, a plain text and I have another plain text extracted from this encrypted text. So simply, I should compare do, those uh, to those texts. One text comes from the bot side, and the other text uh, is extracted from the encrypted message. If the body of those texts are similar, we can prove that okay, bot sign this message. If, the, if they are not similar, something is wrong. This is not Bob. If they are not similar, something is wrong. This is not Bob. Why? Because I couldn't decrypt the message. After decryption, I can see that result is not similar to the main text. So Bob said, signs message M. No one else can sign uh, the message with that form, in that form, because Bob signs the message with his private key. So no one else can sign the message uh, M in that form. And this means that if Bob signed the message M, he does not sign the message M print. How we can use this digital signature? Simply, for example, uh, I, for example, I receive a box. Okay, you are buying this box. Uh, please pay me, for example, one hundred dollars for this. Me, I bought nothing. I wasn't. It's not my order. No, you bought this. This is your address. This is your phone number. You bought this. You have to pay it. No, I never paid for this. I don't like it. I have no money to, to pay for this. So we have to go to court. Okay, did you, okay, gentlemen. This guy said that he never uh, ordered these uh, tools, for example, and. 
I have this order, and who do I want to pay for that? At that time, the court will the court will receive my publicly and the other side. For example, Alice can send the message and the encrypted message, the encrypted version of message of the message. Alice would take those. Uh, items to the court and I uh, will send my public to court if can decrypt my message correctly it means that I bought I uh, make that order I bought something and I have the court to enforce me to buy to pay for that order but if the court does not uh, decrypt the message the court will say okay this is a fake order this is not the Bob's order so everything is finished for me. This is a fake order and it's not my order. We call it non-repudiation. It means that the court can prove that this is a Bob's message, yes or no. No one can cheat here. It's simple, no one can cheat here. If Bob signs it with his uh, private key, so the court can decrypt it with the Bob's public key. Okay, uh, let me. Okay. So, one more question. I'm looking for some for an encryption here. Something encrypted with the Bob's private key. Uh, Maybe something uh, happens wrong here in this case, okay? Uh, and also, also, if I encrypt a text, a large text, if I encrypt it, for example, I have a text, uh, I have a 100 kilobyte text, I'm encrypted. So the result is still 100 uh, kilobytes. So I have to send 200 kilobytes, 100 kilobytes for the real message and 100 kilobytes for the encrypted form of the message. Okay. Can I use something else? Is something smaller than this? Use something very special, very um, Complete, complicated, but uh, simple, small, in a small form. Something like footprint. Look at your fingers. You have some fingerprints in each of your fingers. You have a different fingerprints. None of your fingers have similar fingerprints. Can I put something like fingerprint, digital fingerprint in my message. If I do that, I can find a simpler form. can find a simpler form to uh, put at the end of my message. So I'm looking for a fixed length Easy to compute digital fingerprint. 
because I know that if I use public key and private key uh, for line messages, I have to pay uh, too many computational, for example, computing. Uh, Computational for computations for uh, in, um, time uh, for time for uh, space for computation power. I have to pay too many. I'm looking for something simpler, some, uh, something like a digital fingerprint. Is uh, does uh, have it something like this? Yes, the answer is yes. We can use a hash function. If I put a large message M into a hash function H, I can receive a simple form of hash, H of M. The output is a fixed length, easy to compute message called it hash or a message digest the properties of this the properties of a hash function is that here we put a large too many characters a large file with too many characters into a hash function and the result of that that hash function is fixed so the hash function is main to one we are putting two many bytes into the hash function and the result is for example one byte two byte or something like that okay it depends on your uh, situation and the result has a fixed white, fixed size. We are looking for fingerprints. So, yes, yes, son, that's correct. The hash function is one way, or is a one way function. It means that if I put a large mes a message M into a hash function and receive hash hash function of n, I cannot put it back into the hash function to receive the message, the, uh, the original message. I cannot do this. This is a one-way function. One way. I cannot go back. And this capability, Yes, exactly. This capability is very important in uh, security tools. For example, in Windows, when, I'm, when I create a user in Windows and putting a password, okay, and creating a password for a user, the Windows will hash my password. That password would save in a special file. Next time, when I try to enter my uh, password, again, the Windows would encrypt, would, would hash my new entire password, and then the Windows would compare the hash of new password with the hash of the old password I have hash old hash in a special file in Windows my new entire password would be hashed and then the Windows would compare the new hash with the old one if they are similar then I'm authenticated I can enter into the Windows otherwise Oh, sorry, you cannot enter. The password is wrong. 
use this strategy uh, in different cases. Um, we can use internet checksum, um, but internet checksum is uh, the checksum is uh, is a poor hash function. Why? Because uh, if I uh, change, for example, you get one here, one and nine. If I change the positions, I can see, see here that the result is simple. The result is the same. I'm changing the message, but the result does not change. So uh, the checksum is poor. It's a poor hash function. I'm, I should look for something else. Or something strong, more stronger than this. Okay. Uh, here, so I'm using a strong hash function. So when someone try to send a message, firstly, he should use a hash function to create his uh, hash and then that hash would be encrypted by the private key so we send the message m plus the encrypted format of the hash the, of the results of the hash function encrypted by the private key okay. and we know that this hash value is simple is uh, short with fixed size so in the receiver firstly we should decrypt the hash function using the public key of Bob and at the same time we encrypt the hash to receive message by the hash function this this hash, hash function is similar to this one here we have a hash here and a decrypted hash here so simply we should check them If they are equal, the receipt message is correct. The receipt message does not have not has not uh, changes during the pass along um, internet does not altered does not alter okay and um, this is the last slide for today when we talk about hash function in, in today's internet we have two strong format of hash function one of them is uh, md5 hash function which is based on RFC 1321 um, this hash function computes uh, message digest uh, with length of 128 bits in four steps uh, and um, this 128 bit message or a string um, is arbitrary arbitrary and um, it's difficult to um, rehashing or, or deciphering here. Uh, the other strategy, which is common in today's internet, is uh, SHA1. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a US standard. And in this standard, the message digest has 160 bit length. It's some, uh, somewhat more stronger than MD5, but both of them are 
good options. You can use uh, uh, one of them uh, to prove that your message does not alter. And again, the hash function, we cannot go back in the hash function. Maybe you find a strategy to uh, recheck the results of the hash. Okay, but at that time you need uh, to find too many samples and their hash functions. If you do that, then you can decrypt the hash uh, digest and replace them. But you need uh, too many samples and just compare those samples with the hash functions. You cannot decrypt those messages. Okay. Uh, is there any question? Any question? Okay, I wish the best for you. Uh, thank you and uh, bye bye.